the long awaited her debut album finally dropped kind of kind of from the clouds i think she just kind of yeah. announced it on twitter one night right yeah i i did not know this was coming um yeah. you, but again you, you look you look on spotify and there was the self-titled album and the compilation album of the two i used to know her eps no oh, no no those aren't albums dave so, so we're told <laughs> you know yeah like I feel like her has made such a big jump in the mainstream music world, namely just getting tons of Grammy love for going on, what, three Grammys at this point? Obviously, yeah. she won, a, what was it, Record of the Year, was it, for uh, I Can't Breathe this year? Or was it Song of the Year? I forget. Her and Billy record, won those two I awards. I forget which one is which. But uh, obviously, that's the song where the, the songwriting is, yes, it must have been uh, Song of the Year, yeah, because... The songwriting of that song, very uh, prescient, given everything that happened with uh, George Floyd and uh, protests for uh, racial equality uh, last year in 2020. Not the first song I would have thought of, though, when it comes to that kind of thing. You know, um, The Bigger Picture by Little Baby was certainly more popular. But of course, we're all very privy to something like Walking in the Snow from Run the Jewels. Mm -hmm. Alas, her is the Grammy darling. So her is the one who wins. But I think, as everyone has acknowledged all along, she's incredibly talented. Oh, yeah. We know she's a multi-instrumentalist, piano, guitar. She writes. She sings. She does everything. She makes songs for movies. She makes songs for herself. She does features. She's everywhere. She's doing everything. And now we have the, the debut album, which I don't feel like serves any added purpose because she has long since debuted. This is one of the very uh, weird old definitions to me. Yeah. So... When this dropped, I, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, her, we we talked about her quite a bit on the pod. I think we reviewed um, the first half of I Used to Know Her, yeah. and we just were like, you know, she's a good artist, someone to be looking out for, a lot of, lot of talent here, and obviously we've talked about her when it comes to awards. And, man, I gotta say, whenever she performs at these award shows, she goes off on, like, a Prince, like, guitar solo, and it's just fucking epic and i love it and i'm like yeah this is why she's anointed by the grammys because she's base, you know she's in line to be kind of like prince where it, it feels like she has that potential or at least to be an artist in that stratosphere but i gotta say this debut album bit of a snoozer for me dave bit of a snoozer man this is tough I, I, that's that's been the thing with me largely the whole time it's like i respect the talent i see the talent, like you said good performer yeah but the problem for me is just the songs aren't there no. like i can't breathe winning the award on on the sentiment obviously but like no, no one really likes that song most people don't even know anything about the song because it's not something you're gonna run back and even taking away a message song like that aside like like like, what's the essential her song? Does anybody know? Like, I, I don't know. Like, when I, when I think of her contemporaries, obviously, uh, female-led R&B is huge right now. And there's just people with way more personality in their songs, like LMI, Georgia Smith, yeah. who we recently discussed, uh, Deanna Taylor, heck, even There's Summer Walker, who I'm not the biggest fan of, but <laughs> I feel like they're they're kind of comparable in terms of what they sound like to me. Yeah, but the way her has talked about it, it's like she's like she's on this plane by herself. But I just don't think it's actually coming through in the records. Yeah. So the, what I think of her, the song I think of is the the track she did with Daniel Caesar from her debut, or that's right, her debut mixtape, best part that has seven hundred million streams on Spotify, by far her most popular song. Yeah. So that, that, that's that, clearly the essential song. Then. Yeah. After that, there's no other. There's no track that tops even one hundred and seventy five thousand streams. So. For, Someone that's been anointed, I like you. Like you're pointing out, the numbers aren't really there to back it up, and I, I think it's because as I was listening through this, it's all this like soft R and B mixed with a little bit of rock here and there. You know, throwing a little guitar mm -hmm. solo, but we, you, we know she has the potential to write a song like like Eve's Tumor, Kerosene. Like she has the chops mm -hmm. to write a guitar lick like that to just like set your eardrums on fire and she just kind of seems to fall like really want to go for this like soft r&b music that she obviously loves because it's all we've heard and 
I just want to see her like tap into that performer that she is on stage live. Cause I think there's just so much more here and we get very little of that on back of my mm-hmm. mind, you know, kind of jumping into it. I, I think for me, um, I enjoyed probably the, the beginning the most. Um, I thought Rama with Corday was probably a standout for me. Um, let's see. I thought cheat code was okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the process stood out because of the way that she was using the most basic lyrics to rhyme with process. You know, it's fucking up the progress. Mm-hmm. Not worried about the process. I was like, yeah, okay. And, but probably the, the song I liked the most was um, Hold On because at the end, she's really tapping into what I'm talking about that I want to see from her, which is, you know, she's spreading a little bit more. She's leaning into her guitar chops. It made me, my ears perk up in the second half of the album when I was falling asleep. Um, so that one stood out. And then, of course, Slide with YG. I mean, that's the song that's gotten a lot of radio play off this. And she did a remix. Um, that, who was on that? A Boogie, I think, or something like that. Pop Smoke, A yeah. Boogie, and Chris Brown. Other than that, man, I found this to be a big snooze. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think you name most of the good ones. You know, I mean, get another Bryson Tiller feature on here. I don't think it's quite as effective as her first one uh, could have been. I like seeing a Cordy feature, of course, but actually, I'm more impressed to see a Young Blue feature on Paradise. Seeing him pop up on a major label album after Yours Mine still got the big bump with the Drake remix, so that's nice and all. But yeah, I mean, second track features Ty Dolla Sign another person who just does what her does on a different level. And yet is Ty Dolla Sign playing a lot of guitar? No, but, but he's just making stickier songs, you know? Yeah, for sure. That's what it is, man. It, I, I'm sure this is not going to be her best work. Um, I, I'm, and we'll be talking about her obviously a lot. She's going to be <laughs> talking around, about but, her, <laughs> ah, but um, yeah, that I if you it, this is easy listening, honestly. Like, it was good to listen to this while I yeah, worked. It's not offensive, I, it's just yeah. doesn't stand out as much as you'd want. <laughs> and it, I, I, I really just hope now that she's been annoyed by the Grammys, this, this isn't the direction she goes in, which is safe. Like, she's really got to push it for me to feel like she jumps into that stratosphere, right. but she doesn't care about my opinion, I'm sure. So, no, but actually, I think <laughs> that's why we're both more critical is because you see the talent, you see the ability. Right. And you just want to see it manifested at a higher level. So it's a tough love because we expect more. 